Let's talk about TTRPGs. I'm John. And I'm Josh. And this is Dungeon Brew, where we talk about all things home brew. Welcome to Dungeon Brew. Alright, so today we are getting into religion. We're going to talk about deities, immortals, um, other words that you might have for the same thing, gods. But before we get into um, <clears throat> how it kind of fits in within the gameplay, um, I want to have Joshua talk a little bit about making your religion make sense within the world. Um, I know that he does, he talks quite a bit and knows quite a bit about like the historical relevancy of it and kind of how religions have developed in our own world. So I think it's going to be a useful perspective on generating religion within the setting that you were trying to create. So Joshua, you want to go ahead and take that away? I can sure the hell try. Uh, religion is such a huge aspect, I think, for people in terms of what it means to be human and be alive. And it's been a part of humanity and civilization for as long as we know that for DMs to create a belief system or a religion within their world, they have a lot of room to play. <laughs> like you, I don't know there's a wrong answer in how you create it, I guess, is like my first thought with it. Well, that's good. Right now. That's a good start. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right now within uh, society, we have about 4,000 identified religions across the world um, that are recognized. Mm -hmm. um, through the course of history, we have somewhere between eight and 12,000 gods that have been worshipped at some point within human history. Uh, we know about a hundred thousand years ago, animism was one of the first like belief systems that originated in India, and this later progressed into like polytheism around forty thousand BC and things like shamanism around twelve thousand five hundred BC. So even our earliest ideas of religion came from these ideas of multiple gods, life in everything, connection with everything. And then throughout history this then um, came further into more specific polytheistic beliefs that really emerged around four thousand well, 3000 so, BC. So real quick, would you mind just giving like a one or two sentence kind of recap of animism, shamanism, and then polytheism sure. as it, as it relates to that? I, Cause polytheism, I think is probably the most familiar term, but just for reference and comparison. Yeah. Polytheism is definitely probably what we're most familiar with because it's so uh, relevant in D and D as well. Multiple gods with like multiple characteristics that mm -hmm. are being identified for specific areas that we're worshiping. What them. you would think of traditionally in most D and D settings. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Uh, shamanism is more of like this connection with nature and seeing self as being a product of that nature um, and engaging in like ritualistic pieces, which you worded this really well before we got started on how religion is like the uh, reflection of that practice or that ritual of a belief system right in, in many ways you probably said it better than i just did <laughs> uh but but shamanism itself is very much like that ritualistic piece it, it's um engaging with nature and spirits and seeing life in a lot of different things and having a personal interaction with that life that is found within the world so, and, and so we might think of that as kind of like druidism yeah very much bit. so okay Mm -hmm. And then animism itself is the belief that everything has life in it. Um, it's the idea that this rock has life, that window has life, the tree has life, the birds have life, the wind has life, I have life. And everything is itself um, churning with some sort of essential energy of some okay. kind. Uh, it's almost like this idea that everything has atoms in it <laughs> right? and all of those things generate energy. And our very first belief systems were similar in that aspect about the science to explain it. It was this idea that everything actually has living energy within it and it's all connected to itself. Okay. Thank you. Does, that's, that's, does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, it all makes perfect sense. I just wanted to make sure that we had context moving forward um, because I, I think that some of those are interesting belief systems um, that mm -hmm. would be able, you could incorporate those in various ways in different cultures as you're working on your world building. So it's definitely helpful. 
I, I think so. And as civilization and humanity grew, and, and I think had more of an understanding or maybe more of an agenda of what they wanted to achieve in life, which we've talked about things in this series so far on um, the acquisition of resources and the acquisition of land and warring nations and how conflicts arise and how politics begin to grow and all those types of things, you see that religion also begins to have more definition that's added to it. You start having gods within that polytheistic pantheon, have more humanistic traits that have now motivations that are driving us to behave and act in certain ways and do certain things because they want certain things from us. And you see people begin to... Um, take on some sort of utility for that <laughs> um, where they are essentially saying like, Oh, I'm doing this God's will because he wants me to do this thing because he wants this or desires this in some way. And right. we see this in the course of history as well, where religion began to have more definitive characteristics added to it. Um, like I said, uh, polytheistic belief systems really blew up and expanded across the world between 4,000, 3000 BC. And we didn't even see monotheism really become a religion or belief system until the 6th century BC, which is much later than what most people believe. Right. Sometimes people believe that there was monotheistic belief systems even around 1500 BCE, uh, but what archaeologists have found is that's not actually true. Those individuals were also polytheistic and believing in multiple gods, even if it wasn't the god they worshipped. They believe that multiple gods did exist. Right, so, which, which is, you know, I mean, even, yeah. uh, not to get into a debate on this, but, I mean, even just looking in the Old Testament, there are references to other gods that existed, yeah. and and what, um, you know, the Christian god wanted, or the Jewish god, I guess, at that time, wanted mm -hmm. from his people in relation to that. So, uh, the gods existed, just not necessarily our god for what it is that, you know, that specific culture wanted. Yeah, and, and I think in terms of D&D, &D, and especially in terms of the known religions of the world, that's what we oftentimes reflect in our own gameplay, is that we're serving our god in the game through our right. character, but we recognize that multiple gods exist across the plane. I think I've played a couple of D&D &D games where there's been a one singular entity or god or deity that's being worshipped, but most games that I've played in a D&D &D setting kind of capture that same polytheistic understanding of the world and creation um even if it's not necessarily the specific god or the specific belief system that you're touting as a character as you're moving throughout the world and engaging with npcs and other characters right right, right. yeah uh, but th that's kind of like the breakdown of religion and how it's developed moving from this idea of life and everything into some belief systems that now have monotheism in the real world and i think that trying to capture some of those same elements in gameplay not only makes it relatable to the characters but also gives them a lot to work with in terms of their own belief systems or their own motivations within the world i think the interesting questions that come about when you are a dm creating a world and thinking about religion is are gods real here um are gods real but they aren't active in the real world um, are gods just a figment of men's imagination are gods even in existence or even thought about amongst the people of the civilizations that I'm building? Um, or are there other personal motivations that kind of drive characters that don't have anything to do with an idea of a greater power or a higher power above them? Right. Yeah. It's that notion of did the gods create us or did we create the gods type mm -hmm. situation? Um, which I'm not going to try and answer that, answer that question for anyone, but that <laughs> not, is not today within the world. <laughs> that is something that you as the DM are going to be forced to actually answer at some point, or you can uh, opt for the, just leave it vague and let the, it, which, which does provide a little bit more uh, realism perhaps for the world creation of, you know, creating the gods, creating whatever deific presence you want and then allowing it to be both active and vacant enough to where it's never really clear if it's there type of mm -hmm. a situation, which, which is an interesting notion of how to develop that. Each culture, though, should definitely have its own views of what mm -hmm. religion means, and in relation to your own conversation, or, or your own introduction to some of this, you could I could definitely see a place where you have 
elves being um, attracted to the notion of uh, shamanism or animism in the same way that dwarves might be. Dwarves see life in the stone and in the walls and in the fire and all of those other things. And what they're doing is they're shaping it into a new form, but they always see that there is a life in all of the things that they're touching, which is why they're content being underground next to stone. Whereas you have other cultures who may approach that and go well you're living with lifeless stone there's nothing here and they're like well you just can't feel the, the energy that comes from it type of a thing so i'm like i'm like trying to bite my tongue because actually so many world religions believe that a metallurgy god was the creator of the world you see this in egyptian right. uh, greek and, and, and even early canaanite belief systems and right. pantheons where the where the metallurgy god was the creator and so it works so well with your dwarves to have that same idea right but it makes it feel like there is something there like it does mm -hmm. give it does give uh, a dwarven culture uh, a sense of belonging with on the world stage that is not the same as something like uh, a DD setting where it's like mm. oh our god is moradin and moradin is just one of many gods and we worship him but you worship this other god and so on and so forth um which i have always found a little bit um i i, I found it a little bit lacking just in the sense where when it comes to polytheism in mm -hmm. some of the traditional settings it's like these all all of the people that exist in the world believe that all of the gods that exist in the goddom all exist. Whereas mm -hmm. um, historically there is far more credence to the idea of maybe I believe, I believe in my God and any other God is either not real or not worthy of worship or not worthy of respect or whatever it is because mm -hmm. I, my God will protect me type of a situation or um your gods are false or your gods are evil or something along those lines even if they're good so there there has a there's a tendency i think in in a lot of uh D, D settings where moradin is this lawful good god but i'm trying to think of other um other gods that exist in those settings i'm gonna have to go back to <laughs> the known world for mistra um so you have halav which is a good god and you have orcus who is an evil god and mm -hmm. you know these other and, and that's this kind of notion of everybody kind of has their place and they have this their own pantheons but they're aware of all of the other gods at the same time which is just kind of strange to me it always doesn't feel genuine that um, you come across all these gods that you already know exist and you kind of know what they're about and what they do. And, and that doesn't feel right. <laughs> no, I, I agree with you. And, and I think that that's it. If you can really bring this to life within your culture, because we know that people have always ask these questions, who am I? Why am I here? What's my purpose? And they're oftentimes, I'm going to use the word indoctrinated because there's not really a better word. We all indoctrinate everybody into our cultures and our ideas because that's how we're raised and it's the environment and experiences that we have. But individuals are indoctrinated within this culture where they are given this one God that is the answer for all of those questions of the unknown. And as you have cultures that are uh, assimilated by other cultures or tribes that are assimilated by other tribes, you start to have beliefs and philosophies that should build up on those previous held beliefs that then attribute that new idea. Just an example, tribe A worships the male god of metallurgy right. and tribe B worships the mother goddess. And now there's been a merging of these two tribes. And so the tribes then develop this idea where the god of metallurgy has married the mother goddess and they are now in union with each other and have these offspring god kids that now oversee different aspects of technology that have come into the culture as new ideas that have been developed by mankind as a as a uh, end result of that union between their two gods and it, and it adds like this beautiful story that begins to grow where you know that tribe c is out there that worships this other god that is a lesser god not worthy of worship that should be overtaken and destroyed and we will eventually be able to destroy that god because of the union of our two deities right. and so it it adds so much to the story when you're building and i think that pieces like that as a dm when you create them and have a world full of that type of belief and myth makes it exciting for characters yeah and i think that the main thing with this and many other things we've talked about is that it is these types of notions should be things that are both past that should be past, present, and future. 
So mm-hmm. it is the notion that there are stories of tribe A and tribe B getting together, and that's why those, you know, we we know that these two gods are married. So that's something that happened in the past. It already exists. Present is they're having, like, they've just had another child. Like, these two gods together have had this child, and we're calling it uh, uh, quenching by oil. And then in the future, you have the notion that, oh, this, this, this god, this pantheon that is actively being created, in the future, it is going to go and take on the god from, from Tribe C and destroy it. And mm-hmm. that development and that creation over time adds life to the world in the sense that it is not a stagnant type creation. Mm-hmm. Um, you do see this kind of things in the Forgotten Realms. You see it in Dragonlance. There's, um, uh, you and I are both big fans of Baldur's Gate series, which we've talked about mm-hmm. several times before. The notion that Ball came down and had mortal progeny in order to um, secure his his rise again in the future at some point all had to do with things that were going on in the, in the goddom um, that changed the world. The same thing happens in Dragonlance with various stories of t- uh, Takesis and um, I want to say has it's been so long since I've read the Dragonlance books. Um, but but the mm-hmm. gods at some point will, like, they, go, they come into the world and they're active. At other times they withdraw from the world and they're, they're, they're no longer present. And there's a bunch of things like that that are very interesting in terms of religion takes an active role. So mm-hmm. I, I think that we've probably covered the religion is an active aspect of society quite well. Though the the inverse of that is obviously that it's not. That um, you, you leave a big question mark there. Uh, the gods exist. You can develop that. You can develop pantheons. You can develop belief systems. And when it comes right down to it, uh, for things like what is going on on a religious standpoint, uh, you get the question mark at the end of it. You can still have the things that you're talking about, where it's like, oh, they, they believe that you know the, mud, mm-hmm. the the mother goddess and the the um, creator father have come together in order to try and create something new. But what does that actually mean in the world? Well, nothing. You don't see anything. The tribes get together, but you don't actually feel the deific presence that exists in mm-hmm. the world anywhere because it's not actually part of the world. It is something that was created by the people who live there. And the Mm -hmm. clerics who walk around who profess having divine powers, uh, they might be getting their powers from somewhere else. They might have no powers to speak of whatsoever. It really is kind of up to you to decide where those things fit in. They're all suffering from confirmation bias. Right. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) uh, But I, I, and taking it just one more step in terms of having the gods actively involved which i think kind of reflects back into our greek theme that we've been carrying throughout the world building process is this idea that the gods are very real Mm -hmm. they're very personable they're very human they may even walk amongst us and we see individuals Mm -hmm. do great feats uh, within society that we attribute towards gods and now this may be a godlike individual that's in existence here and even in the real world we see some of this reflected through uh, Greco-Roman Hellenistic ideas or even Orphism that uh, was really kind of adopted by Plato and spread by Plato that led to Neoplatonism later in the uh, what 250 AD um, where that kind of idea and that concept was within their own writings and their own ideas and their own debates that they had amongst one another about the nature of gods and their role within society that if you want to capture that and put it into your world you may have the deities themselves amongst your people walking about as very real engaging individuals that well maybe they're not really gods but you call them gods within that world for your players yeah which would be definitely be an interesting notion and and a different way of kind of spinning things and fitting things together um and in regard to that any any creature that extends beyond like the normal scope of life expectancy or something like that would probably or has a certain amount of power associated with them would probably be seen as gods uh it was it was not uncommon and um all the way from you know egyptian all the way up through a lot of the persian kings and emperors and empresses and that type of thing to see themselves as both gods and kings and Mm -hmm. the notion is that they are gods taking on mortal form or that they are mortals who will ascend to godhood uh, at at the time of death or something along those lines 
Mm-hmm. All of those things kind of fit in together in that same notion where you start to try and mix together um, both cultural beliefs and religious beliefs and philosoph- philosophical beliefs and kind of marry it into something that creates um, a world that doesn't feel quite so flat and stagnant all the way through. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what else to add to this topic. I just love talking about it. I love incorporating it into my games. This is probably one of the elements that I probably hyper-focus on more than some of the other elements that we've talked about. Um, I just think it's an enjoyable concept that really brings the game to life. And I know a lot of players who dive into uh, role-playing games because of this aspect. They like playing with the notions of polytheism, gods, or even their own divinity, or trying to reach a level of divinity through the course of gameplay and, you know, getting that 20-plus character rolling out and, and killing those that are in other realms that are more powerful than themselves. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's there's a lot to do there, but that's actually going to be our next <laughs> video is when we start diving into realms beyond the realm that we're creating. So um, look for that one uh, next week. All right. This has been Dungeon Brew, where we talk about all things homebrew. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out our links down below. Dungeon